Welcome to another edition of Begley's Mailbag, where we answer your questions about the Knicks and the NBA here on SNY.TV. We're going to start off here with at Too Low Tech, my buddy who wants to know how has the Obi Toppin injury changed or not changed the Knicks' trade plans? I don't get the sense that the Toppin injury necessarily has tra- changed the Knicks' trade plans. I do think that this winning streak that they're on, and again, we're filming here Monday morning, Knicks have won seven in a row, that this has changed their direction at the trade deadline. I think if the Knicks were, you know, let's say 10 games below 500, really struggling. I think they would have been more aggressive in trying to pursue a trade that really shakes up the roster to try to get this thing pushed in the right direction because they've got to show results this season, right? But now that they're above 500, playing really well, I'd be surprised if they made a big move where they, you know, took a lot of their draft capital, a couple of young players, put them together for for a top player here at the trade deadline because as long as they're around 500, a couple games under 500, showing that they're competitive. I think that meets the bar of, of what ownership and everybody wants to see over there for this Knicks team this season. So I don't think there's going to be any kind of panic move at the deadline if the Knicks are around that real estate. So I don't think it's the OB injury necessarily as much as it is the recent winning streak that's impacted the Knicks' plans at the trade deadline. Next, we've got one from Fuji Main, and our buddy Fuji wants to know, are we legit or is this win streak a flash in the pan? It's a great point by Fuji because you guys remember that West Coast trip that came right after the Knicks got crushed at home by the Oklahoma City Thunder. And they really started to get it together on that West Coast trip. The players only dinner was a part of that trip. I think it came before the first game and, and they've been solid since, especially these last seven games. So Fuji brings up a good point. I don't think right now they will go all in on a, on a top player like Zach Levine, but everybody's watching Chicago because they just got crushed over the weekend. And you wonder, uh, is ownership gonna give management the green light to go ahead and blow it up? They've got a lot of big salaries on the roster and this is a team that's built to win, but not having Lonzo Ball healthy obviously impacts those plans. A lot of people are keeping an eye on Chicago. One thing on Zach Levine, Tom Thibodeau did trade Zach Levine uh, when Thibodeau was running things in Minnesota in that Jimmy Butler deal. But I was told, even going back to last offseason, that Tibbs was a big fan of Zach's and really respected his work ethic. He's a grinder. Thibodeau's a grinder. So I think Thibodeau respected that a lot. I asked Thibodeau about that a couple weeks ago, and, and he did say, yeah, he respects Levine's work ethic. So I don't think you should look at that trade as any kind of impediment towards the Knicks pursuing Zach Levine, but I don't, I'd don't. i be surprised if it happened ahead of the trade deadline unless the Bulls were willing to take, uh, you know, a deal that was, uh, you know, 60 cents on the dollar, something like that, which would surprise me. We got a query here from at Kale, not Kale. Do you see a trade that would alter the current starting five? I don't think so. I'd be surprised, again, as long as the Knicks stay within, you know, at 500, a couple games above 500, I don't think there's going to be a need for them to make the kind of trade that shakes up this starting lineup. And you look at this starting five, again, we're filming Monday, uh, Knicks have won seven in a row, and the starting five has been a key to their success lately. You go back to November 21st, that's when the Knicks reinserted Quentin Grimes and Mitchell Robinson into the starting lineup. And since then, the Knicks, going into that Pacers game at least, their starting five had the best plus minus of any any five-man unit in the league. I think they were plus 65 or something like that. And they had played the most minutes of any five-man lineup in the league. So this starting unit had really played well for New York. I don't think there's any reason for the Knicks to change it, to tinker with it. Again, if injuries come up, if they start to skid, they get closer to the trade deadline. Maybe that changes, but right now this starting unit has been so key to their turnaround. I don't think they tinker with it at all. Got one from my buddies at the KOT show. It was rumored that the Knicks tried to trade for Eric Gordon. Does that indicate the Knicks want to use Fournier and Cam to bolster their bench? Uh, The Gordon stuff, I know Jig Fisher, my buddy at Yahoo, reported that. My understanding was the Knicks were keeping an eye on Gordon going back to the preseason. But I think if something was going to happen, uh, it would have happened there already. Uh, maybe I'm off on that. But the idea that now the Knicks are winning 
Um, and, you know, you have this rotation that's settled in and helped you play good basketball. I think I'd be a little bit surprised if the Knicks went and, and tried to add a piece like Gordon, who you would want to play significant minutes uh, via trade. I would think that the Knicks more so are looking at draft capital if you're moving off of some of the players that are out of the rotation. Obviously, they have to take some salary back uh, because they don't have the cap space to absorb salary, so you have to salary match. But I, I would assume that the draft capital is the more appealing a target at the moment right now for the Knicks. When you talk about a trade of Cam Reddish, Fournier, or Rose, and yeah, Gordon was on their radar. I don't, I don't think that he's as strongly on their radar now as he was. Uh, and then the next question from the Nick of Time show is, the Knicks traded for Patrick Beverly and Kendrick Nunn. Will they have a role with the team or will they be cut or traded? My understanding on Nick Lakers talks was they had something that was with a third team. So I don't know if, you know, Nunn and Beverly would be routed to that third team. But I have to assume that the assets that were coming into New York, at least one of them, would be going to that third team. So I think that's worth noting here as you think about the Knicks and the Lakers trade talks, because I'm sure that the Knicks will continue to talk to Los Angeles and several other teams as you get closer to the February trade deadline. But the Nick Laker talks that I'd heard about earlier this month did involve a third team. We've got a question here from the bench warmer. Any solid players the Knicks are looking to add in a Cam, Evan, or Rose trade? Uh, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but I think that for the Knicks right now, it's more about draft compensation than it is, you know, adding a rotation player. I think you look at the landscape around the league, it seems like with the Knicks winning right now, there's not a player that you could add where you could say, all right, we're going to put him in the rotation to fit seamlessly into what we're doing and we'll keep winning. Now, injuries could change that uh, for both the Knicks and for other teams. One thing that I found interesting was I was told that Knicks at least touched base with Toronto uh, recently, past few weeks on OG and an OB, obviously a fantastic young player, defender in Toronto. Uh, Raptors, it's going to be interesting to see how they proceed with uh, their roster at the trade deadline. Knicks have touched base on OG. I don't know if the talks went anywhere, but it tells you a little bit about if the Knicks are going to swing big, um, where they might look either at the deadline or more likely uh, in the offseason. That'll do it for this edition of Begley's Mailbag, but please be sure to keep those questions coming because we will be back with you very soon answering your questions on the Knicks and the NBA.